Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagoras, and today I have a fun Skellige deck for you guys, and that is this here Cambi discard deck. So the gist of this deck is that you can win one round through King Bran and Ceres and Morkvarg and Queensguard, along with discarding Raiders and thinning your deck, and then you can win a second round with Cambi and also resurrecting Queensguard, or alternatively Regis. So the way that this deck works is that you have Cambi, and when Cambi dies, it's a one strength gold you give to your opponent. When Cambi dies, it spawns Hemdal uh, on the same row as Cambi, so on the same side. Uh, and Hemdal gives your opponent 16 points because Cambi is disloyal. So Cambi goes to your opponent, you kill Cambi, they get 16 points, and Hemdal nukes everything on the board. He destroys all units on the board uh, and clears all boons and hazards. So you basically cleared your entire opponent's board and given them 16 points. So the gist of this is that you would play Cambi when they're more than 16 points ahead uh, and destroy all of their tempo. And then once you've played Cambi, you can then gain a lot of points with big tempo plays. So you're going to be making late game big tempo plays uh, with things like resurrecting your Queen's Guard uh, and also Regis. Regis, he weakens the unit by half its base power, rounding up and boosts self by half its base power. So if you use Regis on the 16 strength Hemdal, he gains 8 points, Hemdal loses 8 points. That is a 23 point play, for example. And you can make your Queen's Guard and your Ceres better using Holger Blackhand and Drake Bondu. Drake Bondu strengthens up to two units in your graveyard by three, uh, and he can target gold, so he can strengthen the Ceres. Holger damage unit by five. If it was destroyed, you strengthen the highest unit in your graveyard, so you can make Ceres the highest unit with stuff like Drake Bondu, or just in terms of controlling uh, the order in which you play cards. Uh, we can thin our deck with our clan Drummond Warmongers. We can use these to help get the Queen's Guard into the graveyard and also to get these clan and crate raiders out the deck. So we can thin with those and they also count as resurrects for the Ceres timer. Uh, and we also have two Whale Harpooners, which we can use to kill Cambi. Um, because if they row stack, we can put Cambi on a different row and then pull her in. And even then, if they boost the Cambi, it's all fine. I guess him because it's a cock roll. Uh, we also have two Heimei Battle Maidens, which we can use to thin out Warmongers and we can use to thin out Harpooners, and if we really have to, you can actually use it to thin out Queen's Guard as well. We have plenty of Resurrects because we're going to be bringing these Queen's Guard back. Uh, then we have Gremist for Weather Clear. Also, he can give you Blood Curdling Raw, which is useful, uh, and Fog. You could run Svan Riga instead if you want a little bit more discard, uh, and that would be okay, but then you're sacrificing Weather Clear. Though this is a meme deck, so you know it's not really a mistake. Uh, and then we have Restore, which you can use on Gremist, or you can use it on Drake Bondu. Uh, or Holger Blackhand, and basically by bringing these back you get extra graveyard reses, so that's quite useful. Um, Decoy is another card you could choose to run in this deck instead of Morkvarg, but I like Morkvarg for the timers uh, and to help basically guarantee we get the Ceres uh, out should we should we need to kind of reduce her timer, he's quite useful, and also for a little bit of carryover. But you could run Decoy in this deck just as well, um, and it would be quite successful. Uh, this deck, I wouldn't recommend playing in ranked above about 3k MMR. I've played it in ranked at about 2k MMR, and I kind of sit at about a, just above a 50% win rate. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a situational deck. Graveyard Grief really hurts it um, if they steal your Queen's Guard, for example. So it's not great against Nilfgaard, and Nilfgaard is quite prevalent. Uh, also, Monsters and Caretaker can be a little bit of a problem. But that's the deck, and it is fun, and it does give you a bit of a change of pace. Uh, so without further ado, I'll jump into a game, and I'll showcase this deck in action. And if you enjoy this deck, then do hit that thumbs up button, guys. Of course, friend. Okay, so we're up against Dagon. Dagon, they have Caretaker, so you need to be a little bit careful in how you buff your Queen's Guard. We actually have a bit of an awkward hand here because we want a Mulligan Queen's Guard. We want a Mulligan Ancrate, Morkvog, and Ceres. Um, although we can play Morkvog from hand and it's not hugely problematic. So let's Mulligan the Raider, then the Queen's Guard will keep premium. And then we'll Mulligan Ceres. And it means we get one fewer res reses on Ceres, but all in all, it's totally fine. We don't have Gremist, which means we don't have Weather Clear, unfortunately. Uh, it looks like this is a Deathwish deck, so that's totally fine. For now, let's start setting up our strategy, which means we play King Bran. Um, and then we would normally mulligan Morgvog, but we're actually going to mulligan Ceres, and then probably both of the Queen's Guard. We don't actually have any... Uh, we don't have any warmongers in hand, and because we have any warmongers, we can't then discard anything further. So for now, I think the best bet is to just get this set up, uh, and that's the Queen's Guard's now in the graveyard. 
It does mean to be caretakers, you can take one, but it's not hugely problematic to the strategy. We have Royal Decree and we have Regis, so we can make our Cambi plays and it should be okay. And now we, we want to keep an eye out for a 5 strength target to play Holger, because as soon as we play Holger at the moment, Ceres is the strongest unit, so she'll get buffed and that's what we want to see. As it is, there's no 5 strength, 9 strength unit, so we'll just play Mokvarg from hand. The issue we have at the moment is, honestly, like, a lot of our cards are more situational. We don't really want to res our Queen's Guard just yet, because we'd want to be buffing them with Drake. Um, but we... I guess we can play Drake, to be honest. We, I was going to say we, we need to wait till we play Holger, but we don't. We can play Drake and buff one Queen's Guard and one Ceres, and it should be okay. In this situation, we probably actually want to row stack, because if we row stack, then uh, he can only weather one row. But the problem is, a lot of our units are, you know, row locked. This is probably one of the most row locked decks in the current state of the game, where everything is agile. Uh, still don't really have a great target. So, let's play Drake. This is like some kind of hybrid deck, you know? They have Arrakis, they have Elementals, they have Dagon. I guess it's Swarm. I guess it's Dagon Swarm. And Dagon Swarm's actually fine because we can just kill everything with, uh, we can just kill everything with, um, Kambi, so, meh. Hopefully he consumes something now. Uh, and then we actually get targets for Olga. Because here we are just setting up our strategy. This is the gist of this situation is, you know, we want to get the strategy set up. We want to get a really buff Ceres. Um, that would be really, really cool. I've actually had a 19 point Ceres before with this deck. It just depends on kind of how the, how the game goes. There's our five point target, so that's all good. I'm guessing he'll fog, I don't know, back, front. This is actually okay, because he's just going to trigger our resurrect. So there, we now have Ceres on 13 points. Admittedly, we do have to play our Queen's Guard in the front row, so if we play our Queen's Guard, we would be protecting our good friend Mokvarg here uh, from any sort of damage. We don't really want to play the Harpooner, because we want to be able to kill Kambi. But if we do play the Harpooner, uh, we can always resurrect. We can always resurrect it, so then we still have a way of killing Kambi. So there are kind of options in, in terms of how we play this deck and what sort of strategies we go for. The other thing you can always do is discard a Priestess and then restore it, and then you get an 8-strength Priestess rather than a 1-strength Priestess. Okay, so 18 to 25. If we play our Queen's Guard now... We put our Ceres on two turn timer, which means that we can resurrect her again on the next round. At the moment, he has a lot of kind of carryover is the issue. You know, he has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's got ten points of carryover and we only have five. So it would be a little bit awkward in that regard. On the flip side, if we pass now, we have options in terms of how we play into this. I think I'm just going to play the Queen's You're Guard. Good. Real good. Because this is going to help with the Ceres timer. Um, now she's down to two, which means that on the next turn she'll be on one. So we can kind of plan around what we want to play. But we probably are going to be looking to pass out of this round fairly soon. The problem is if he sets up a huge amount of carryover, then we kind of have to play into this round. 47 to 33. If I play... Harpooner, then I get three and eight is not enough. Unless we pull something onto this row. But this guy's still gonna eat. So I can pull this down to this row, which would kill it. So that would be eight and five. Um it's not really enough still. Unless we play Camby. Um, but we still have to play one more card, is the issue. I do want him to play into this round though, because if I can get him unless we just pass out here. In which case he gets carryover, we get carryover, and we just play on the next round. I think I think we pass out of this round. Like, if we could have gotten him to eat Cambi, it would be really good. Because then we can trigger it the turn we play it, which is always useful. Ah, oh, Jesus. So I want Warmongers, but I don't want to risk pulling Cambi or Clan and Crate Raiders, so I feel like I just have to kind of accept it. 
And we'll just leave it at this. If he passes, we can play Grimmest. And then that sets up a restore target. Although, to be honest, restoring Drake Bondu is actually really good here as well. Um, so maybe we would just do that and then win the round. Because that would give us 8 points, which would put us ahead. He has to kind of decide if he really wants this round or not. The thing is, Restore doesn't count as a Resurrect. Um, so that's the other thing worth being aware of. She's on a one turn timer. So we can get her with Sig. The alternative is we play Sig. And then Resurrect Drake. Which would pull Ceres, but I'm wondering if it would pull Ceres after I buff her. I think it's okay. So we buff Ceres and the smallest Queen's Guard because we want to spread out our buffs on the Queen's Guard. And that's a decent play. And then we hold our Resurrects for the next round when we play Kambi. The thing is, it's, it's one of these kind of setups where it doesn't matter too much. If he has loads of carryover, it doesn't matter because we can just kill it all. And if he eats loads of eggs, it doesn't matter because we can just kill it all. So you're kind of not too bothered by your opponent's strategy so long as they don't disrupt your strategy too much. <laughs> so then the question becomes, you know, how do you want to play into this? Do we want to play um, Gremist? In which case we can get, you know, a bunch of points and that would put us ahead. Do we want to play Harpooner? You know, how valuable are these cards later on? I think we keep the Harpooners just in case he happens to buff the, uh... If he happens to buff the, uh... Truly? Buff the... Uh, Cambi that we can kind of replay it. The one thing we're not running, obviously, is Donna. So if our Cambi gets locked, you know, we just kind of have to deal with it. Unicorn. So, we're a little bit behind. Just a smidgen. If we restore Drake, we have more points into our graveyard onto Queen's Guard. So that is an option. For now though, let's just do this and get some damage out. We're not quite ahead, but you know, we'd have to play one more card anyway. It's fine. If he tries to just all in us, we can be him. And then we win with the resurrect. Because we can just can be. So very, very oh, this very. is beautiful. So we can just can be, and then once we've can be, we can just Regis, and that'll win us the round. So all in all, this is fine. We play Holger. Pardon me, a coward? And I guess we kill... I mean, ideally we'd kill something on the back row in case we harpoon into the front row, but we need the harpooner to kill Camby, so... Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so... So let's kill this and hope it lands on the front row. It just means that, like, our Camby is more likely to, you know, work, basically. And then I think this is where we, we then go for Camby, um, after whatever he plays here. The only issue we have is that if we play Camby, he's likely to pass. He is likely to pass. Because as soon as we play Camby, what will happen is uh, he'll realize we're going to kill it. But if we do that, how many points behind are we? We can catch up with... I believe if we do that, we can catch up with Queen's Guard. So it's okay. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, I should have played that on the back row so that I could pull it to the front row. Yeah, there's the pass. So we're 28 points behind. This is 11, 5, and 7. Modern Freyr is patient. And then maybe we just have to hope to pull a priestess. You're good. Real good. 
Yeah, I guess we'd have to hope to pull a priestess. So, we we won with Canby by, I guess, like, not triggering it. We're one card down. He has one point of carryover. The problem is because we didn't win the w first round, we couldn't dictate the, the pace of this round. <laughs> Wait, does he does he carry over does he carry over Hemdal? Is that how that works? Oh no! <laughs> this is terrible. This is terrible. Uh that gives me a resurrect. I think I have to mulligan this and try and get a priestess. No! Oh I misclicked! Oh everything has gone terribly! Oh everything is everything has gone terribly. I didn't realize that I didn't realize that Hemdal would give would, he'd carry over. That is such an awkward interaction, holy shit. <laughs> oh dear, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Like, there is nothing that we can do here. There is nothing that we can do. That's it. Oh man, if we'd had a priestess, at least we would have had like a decent number of, of points from this, you know. This is a big play, this is a big boy play. Is she on one turn timer? Oh, feels bad. Yeah, so she would have been on because of Morkvog, she would have been resurrected, so we would have gotten 11 and 5 and 7. Let me work this out. We would have gotten 11 and 5 and 7. I don't think it would be enough. Although, actually, we would have also taken 8 points off of eight points off of Hemdal, so we might have actually won that had we not accidentally misclicked our mulligan and potentially mulliganed into a, into a priestess. It might have been fine. This is the deck, you guys. It's a little bit of a mess. Anyway, let's jump into another game, and I'll showcase the second action once more for you guys. For Skellige's glory! Sit at my table and let's drink. Okay, so we're against Crack and Crate, which is cursed. This is good because it gives us lots of options for nuking. Uh, our hand is actually pretty decent. Um, we have more or less everything that we need. We'll get rid of a Queen's Guard. We get rid of Morkvog, and we get rid of Ceres. It means we're going to have to hold two Queen's Guard, which is a little bit awkward, but it's better that than holding Ceres. You could hold Morkvog. That does work okay. Um, he has to go first. The moment. I and need he to plays all geared. We play Bran. Me and because we have um we have Warmongers in hand and Heimei, we can actually more or less target discard, in which case we're gonna get rid of Morkvog, Ceres, and one raider. Because by getting rid of a raider, firstly this doesn't tell him that we've got King's Guard, so we can delay our strategy a little bit more. But it also puts her on a two-turn timer, uh, which is I think a little bit better for us. You just muzzle my Morkvog? Fucking rude. Some people got no manners, you guys. Some people got no manners. At least he can't muzzle my Queen's Guard now. So that's a thing that can't happen. Uh, so we'll play the Warmonger. For a glass. And discard For the other Raider. Praise and then we can pay me the Warmonger and discard a Queen's Guard. So then it's all set up. We actually, we don't have Holger and we don't have Drake, so it's kind of a little bit awkward here. The time for blathering is past. A little bit awkward. Um, we'll get rid of this Queen's Guard now. Hopefully he doesn't check my graveyard and see that we're playing Queen's Guard. The time for blathering is past. Honestly, this round's going to be quite tough for us. Um, what we could do is we could Gremist Fog, but we maybe should have done that the last round because now we don't have tempo. Um, in which case we should probably Grimace Blood Curdling Rule. The other thing we're missing is we don't have options for... Have you not been uh, we don't have options for... We'll put you here. Like I said, buffing the units in hand, so it's a little bit... The mother a little bit awkward. Because as soon as we play Canby, they just pass. Like, that's just what's going to happen. So then the question is, will we be able to catch up if we do that? That's what you have to kind of ask yourself. Uh, at the moment we can res our Queen's Guard, but that's only one Resurrect. Although we only need one Resurrect for Ceres. So potentially we just play a Queen's Guard and pull one and res Ceres and then You're good. we're ahead. Real good. Need a good slapping. This tells him I have one in hand. I honestly think we maybe go Camby here. The problem is if I play Camby here, Hemdal carries over to the next round. But if Hemdal carries over to the next round, it's kind of okay. Because 
now he kind of realizes what's going to happen. He's kind of forced into a situation where he has to pass. Um, what it does mean is that he's going to keep, he's going to get 16 points on the next round. But if he gets 16 points on the next round, that's kind of not an issue for us because we can just try pass. Um, and if he reses anything big, you know, we have Regis to deal with it. So it's fine. I think, I think this is okay. The alternative is we dry pass, but if we dry pass, you know, it's gonna, we're gonna be in the same situation. Um, and we're probably better off draining his cards because of this Queen's Guard strategy. The time has come! Everyone is dead. Does Morkvog get, like, resurrected twice here? How does this work? Yeah, so it did, it, it did actually double trigger the Morkvog res. Um, so that's interesting. So not quite as much carryover as he would have liked. So I think we get rid of we get rid of the uh Warmonger. Harpoon is alright. So we can kill Morkvog, we can kill Orc Geared. It doesn't wholly matter what we kill. Um honestly at this point I'm just trying to buff up my Queen's Guard. Uh although actually I think that just hit a Warmonger, because these are only four points apiece. Not my Queen's Guard, my uh my Ceres. Yeah, she's only seven, so we now have a eleven strength more uh eleven strength warmonger res. But you know, we have a resurrect, so that's fine. And he kinda has to play into this round, so we're kind of okay to just spend our time here draining out his cards. Uh and we have lots of options. Bow before modern Freya. So do we want to sig this round? If we sig this round, she goes to a three turn timer. Which I think we do need. So if we play Sig this round, then what do we Sig? Because ideally we'd Sig Drake Bondu, but we just haven't not been seeing Drake Bondu. So that's a little bit awkward. The alternative is we Sig... Uh... We could Sig a Warmonger, and then thin the deck a little bit more. Which isn't a bad strategy, like we're not trying to win. So let's just Sig... I guess this Warmonger. And then discard. If we discard a priestess, we can tra chain reses. So if we discard a priestess, we can priestess into a priestess um, to guarantee our thing. But this is a worse draw, so we probably just want to discard this. Because if we can, basically, if we can get rid of bad draws, that's going to help us. Bow before modern Freya. Come to get ya. And the more cards we can get out of him, honestly, the better. Because the more cards that he plays now, you know, the fewer points he's going to have in the end game. Because we won the first round, so he has to play into this. And his whole strategy is about having lots of units, because the whole point of having lots of units is that you play lots of cursed units, and then they buff off of the damaged units, and you kind of benefit from that. And he can't pass, because he knows we have lots of points with Queen's Guard, for example. Although maybe we just play the Queen's Guard here, which would put Ceres on a two-turn timer. And then use this res on Queen's Guard. It's not a bad strategy. The problem is he's going to have a big resurrect on Jenge. But we have Regis, so his big resurrect on Jenge actually helps us. Because this will put Ceres on two turns, right? So we play this. Pansy. Pull the Queen's Guard. Ceres is on two turns. He still can't pass because we're too far up. Like, we're not far enough behind in two cards that he'd feel comfortable. So then we get more cards out of him. And now we pass. I wonder what his Kraken crate is going to pull. Because normally you would use it to pull Jenge, but he played Jenge. So that'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see. What I, I want to draw Drake. No Restore works. Because I... Actually, I didn't discard a Priestess. I stand corrected. Although I can use this to pull a Warmonger. I think we keep this. Because we can restore... We can actually restore a, a Queen's Guard. If we restore a Queen's Guard, it becomes an 8. Or we just restore Gremist. I think we probably just restore Gremist. Standard strategy. He's going to resurrect 12, but that's a really good Regis target. Or Jenge, actually. Actually, no, he wouldn't He wouldn't restore Jenge. That wouldn't make any sense. Forget well, Frank. So, if this dies on his turn, he gains a benefit. So, actually, what we're going to do here is play Restore. Uh, and then we play Gremist. Tactical play here. Uh, and then we play Gremist. Gods. And because this isn't dying on his pace. turn, what this means is that it doesn't get the benefit. So we can do this. 
and his herald is not as useful as he would like it to be. And we've also taken everything off this row, which means that this damages all units on the opposite row by one when it dies. Um, so we've basically stopped that from being a thing. Royal Decree. Okay. Lugos. I make the laws here. I feel like we have to wait with Regis to try and find a good target. But ultimately he's likely to wait. Modern Freyr is patient, but she brooks no insult. This is twelve. And these are twelve. How many How many ticks is my I think my Ceres is only on one tick. So I think we can actually afford to mulligan this. Sorry, draw this. It doesn't matter what we discard. I'm ready. Not bad. Not bad at all. And we haven't stacked the front row, so then we're stopping him getting value out of Wilhelm. Is he going to expect Regis? That is the kind of question we have. At the moment, this is only worth 15. 15 not too bad, though. Does he strengthen? He strengthens. Okay, it's worth a lot more now. So we'll just we'll do that. 46. But if he plays another one, I think he wins. Because I think it's worth the same number of points. The goddess protect you oh from no, Jenge's coming out to play. Ah, oh, it's not enough. It's not enough. Because he can use Jenge to kill the skulls. Uh, and that helps him. Oh, it was so close, you guys. The problem is we haven't actually been able to use Kambi in the way that we would like to use Kambi. Because the way you like to use Kambi is you win a round. But we, we've been having trouble winning rounds. So that's kind of a problem. Like I say, this deck is a fun deck. This deck isn't necessarily a strong deck and i think honestly like we thinned to three cards but we just didn't draw drake so we weren't able to rack up as many points on our resurrects as we would have liked to because you can always sig drake and you can res holger and stuff and you can get decent targets um and because the points went onto the warmonger instead of the you know the ceres or the uh they went onto the warmonger instead of the ceres or the queen's guard it did it did kind of you know hinder us a little bit just a little bit oh man six points in it six points you gotta, you gotta wonder, you gotta wonder how it, how it maybe would have panned out if we'd seen Drake, because Drake, you know, he boosts units. Um, it maybe would have been enough. Maybe would have been enough. Anyway, that is the Canby deck. Like I say, it's not a very good deck, as evidenced by this video, but it's a really fun deck to play, and it, it makes a nice change of pace. You know, people don't always expect it. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think in the comments below, um, and if you've enjoyed this video, you can always subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah, you can always catch me streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagoras, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Jagoras. Thanks for watching, have a fantastic day, and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!